Game four, NBA Finals, Friday night. And we once again have a pretty big contest here on DraftKings, 250K to first. I'll do my best to break it down for you guys. But if you're a first time viewer, welcome to my channel. I cover content for DraftKings, NBA Top Shot, Super Draft, and for prize picks. Uh, the sponsor of the video today is Super Draft. You can use my code DKDFS for a $50 match on a $50 deposit. That is linked down below. And if you guys are looking for more in depth content, you can check out my Patreon, also linked down below. Um, apologize if I haven't been as active on Twitter or replying to the YouTube comments over the last week. Um, just going through some, some personal stuff right now down pretty bad, but, um, yeah, we'll, we'll, we'll get through it. So again, apologize if I, have, if I haven't, if I haven't been as active guys, but, um, let's, um, let's take a look at my lineup here from last slate. So, um, I was like, I think like 50th percentile is just very average night. Um, didn't cash in, in tournaments. Um, you know, stuff got a little bit banged up there at the end. We'll keep buying on that. He is expected to play tomorrow. Um, but the emergence of Rob Williams, who, as I mentioned in the Patriots email, was like, if I knew he's going to play mid twenties minutes, you know, I would like him a lot, but obviously his minutes fluctuate, how healthy is he? And he actually looked like, it's just so Robert Williams is just so weird because it's like some games he can barely move and other games he looks like a hundred percent. It's just like, you don't, it's so tough to quantify that, you know, trying to, you know, whether or not you want to go there for, for DFS, but yeah. So the emergence of Rob Williams playing more, Derek White actually played a bit less. Um, Otto Porter was solid. Gary Payton did lose a little bit of run too, but they fell behind, uh, you know, they were behind for a majority of the game. So they're kind of playing catch up. And I feel like if they're playing catch up, they're going to play a guy like Jordan Poole more for offense. If they're, you know, even or ahead, you know, you might see more run for guys like Porter and, and Payton. So that is one thing to keep in mind for, uh, for game four. But yeah, guys, that's it for the look back. So, um, let's start it off with, okay. I think the vague, I think Boston's four point favorites here. Let's see. They were three and a half point favorites for game three. I think with the staff, you know, foot injury. Yeah. The four point favorites, two fourteen and a half and a half over under. So, um, starting off on the golden state side, obviously we'll, we'll keep an eye on the staff injury. It is the same foot that he missed a good chunk of time with earlier in the year. Uh, but there's optimism right now that he's going to play. He said he's going to play, but if for some reason he, he wakes up really sore tomorrow and, just, and can't go, um, that's obviously going to change the entire slate. Because number one, you know, that would increase the chance that this game could blow out. And number two, it's just going to open up so, so much usage. So let's quickly talk about if Steph Curry doesn't play, Jordan Poole, I would say, almost guaranteed to start. He would look like probably the best point per dollar play in the slate. Clay Thompson would look better. Wiggins would look better. Basically all... You know, the, the relatively high usage players would just get a pretty significant boost. You would get a lot more run for Gary Payton. Like, Otto Porter would probably play more. Um, Iguodala would most likely see rotation minutes. So, um, if that does happen, it's, it's really going to, you know, boost the appeal of the Golden State guys, but also increase, you know, the possibility that game maybe doesn't stay competitive. But, assuming he does play Steph Curry, I think he looks good at the top. I mean, obviously, Boston's a good defensive team, but, um, you know, Golden State really needs to rely on Steph, and Steph needs to come through in a big way because, you know, Clay. I mean, Clay had a decent game last game, but Clay struggled a majority of the time. Um, so Golden State is pretty reliant on Steph Curry, and, uh, yeah, I have no issue paying up for him at 11K. I guess the only downside is, you know, he he can be, uh, you know, a little bit score independent at times, but, um, yeah, I, I think Steph looks looked good at the top. Um, Mid-range options, price points haven't really moved a ton in guys like Wiggins, Clay, Draymond, Looney. Um, one thing, finally, finally, the loony slappies get punished. They've been running so, so good, uh, with, you know, five steals and blocks a game and, you know, blowout. So loony plays, but finally they got punished sub 20 minutes. You know, we've been saying that all along with these guys coming back, Looney's going to take the hit, but he has taken the hit minutes. He's just, you know, bailed people out with getting falling into four steals and blocks. Uh, so finally, uh, that that's one thing that really cheered me up, even though I didn't cash, was just knowing the Looney people really were punished, like really, really got punished. That that made me happy. Uh, but no, seriously, Looney, I, I don't have much interest in him. Um, I I just he's he's going he's the one that takes the biggest hit with you know guys like Porter and Peyton being healthy and um yeah it, it has shown the minutes have ticked down 25 then 21 then 17 so um I don't have a ton of interest in Looney um I think you know a way he could get there is if Draymond gets in foul trouble which is definitely possible I mean Draymond followed out last game in 35 minutes but 
Draymond, I think, if he stays out of foul trouble, is going to play about 40 minutes, right? He was on pace for that uh, game two. I think he was on pace for that last game as well before he fouled out. I don't know. It was like five or six minutes to go he fouled out. But, um, yeah, I mean, Draymond had an awful game last game. But who cares? Like, that doesn't bother me at all. I think he comes back a little bit more aggressive and, you know, gets in a flow better for game four. Um, so I still like Draymond there in the mid-range, just a guy that, um, you know, is going to play more at the five with Looney losing minutes. That's a boost to Draymond. So still like him in the mid-range. Uh, Clay Thompson finally had a good game in the finals. Uh, decent shooting game, 7-17. to 17, And we saw the ceiling, right? So, like, basically the same thing I'll say once again. Like, Clay is the guy with the highest ceiling of the mid-range Golden State guys. He's also probably the guy with the lowest floor, though, of, like, the Wiggins, Clay, Draymond grouping. Um, and then Wiggins, Wiggins had a decent game. Um, I mean, he's going to play big minutes. I think he looks, looks solid as well. Um, so that's not the golden state guys. Again, I, I'm off Looney. Uh, no surprise there. Now Jordan pool, 5.8 K. So still played 24 minutes. Um, it's kind of a situation where, like I said, if golden state falls behind, like they did last game, I think he'll play a bit more. If golden state gets off to an early lead though, I think you probably see more of, you know, Gary Payton and, and Otto Porter jr. So it's kind of game flow dependent, I think, for how many minutes Jordan Poole plays. Um, he still is a guy with the ceiling, so still someone I'm intrigued by for tournaments. But also, I think he's a guy that, like, if Golden State, you know, goes ahead maybe by, like, 15 points at halftime or, or something, like, I would not be surprised if Jordan Poole only plays, like, 15 minutes. So, like, again, kind of kind of dependent on how I think how the game goes. Uh, Otto Porter, 4.8K, so went back to 21 minutes. And that's, I think, what we would have gotten game two if the game didn't blow out. Um, so I think to like a fair guess for his minutes is probably around 20, a guy that decent defender, you know, uh, can knock down some threes. So, uh, I think he's kind of just like a fair value play. And then Gary Payton, uh, played, I think a little bit less than everyone was expecting only 11 minutes. Uh, but again, I think it's just because they fell behind, they were behind for the majority of the game. So they needed to play catch up and Gary Payton, not saying he can't be decent offensively, but more out there for his defense. So, um, if you think like Golden State gets off to an early lead, I think Gary Payton could, you know, be a guy that maybe plays 20 plus minutes like he did in game two. So, like I said, with, with Payton and Poole, I think it kind of depends on how the game goes. If you think Golden State falls behind, I think it's Poole. You want to look to more if you think they're playing from ahead, I think Gary Payton looks decent. But the uh, pricing is tighter on this slate. Um, it's a little bit trickier to build out a lineup, which I think is good. I would rather have that than in like, you know, being a, like you basically just play whoever you want. Um, but yeah, I do think so. Gary Payton is, is a solid value there. 3.2 K surprisingly B leads have still played a little bit, played three minutes. Um, I'm not really looking to go there. And Nick Wadala was basically a DNP. He came in like, it was kind of like he was getting a DNP until Draymond filed out. And then he came in. I was like, I was really, I thought like out of Porter would come in for some reason they went to Iguodala. Um, obviously concerning that he basically wasn't in the regular rotation last game. Um, but yeah, that's Golden State. So on the Boston side, um, not a ton really is, is moved pricing rise either. Uh, Tatum, Brown still look good at the top. Um, again, Tatum, I think is the spend up with the highest floor. Um, so I think he still looks very, very safe. Jalen Brown had a great first quarter, um, finished with almost 50 fans points. He's a similar ceiling to Tatum. I would say a little bit of a lower floor, but yeah, Tatum Brown both look good, right? I have I have no issue with either of them. I think they're priced about, about where they should be. But yeah, I think they still look both pretty good. And then Smart Horford, I mentioned that I thought they were going to bounce back after a bad game too. They both did. Marcus Smart went for 40 faints points. He was my favorite, you know, contrarian captain play last slate. Uh, he, he had a solid game. And then Al Horford finished with 34 fancy points. Um, so both the two guys in the mid-range and Smart Horford, again, I'm expecting Smart to play, assuming no foul trouble around 40 minutes, that's the only thing you have to worry about is he'll be the defender on Steph a lot. So there is a possibility of foul trouble. And then Horford, I think we probably get, you know, mid-30s minutes from him. He did, you know, a few times their uh, last game kind of didn't play the best defense on Steph. He dropped coverage when he probably shouldn't have. So, but I still think Horford is, you know, a solid defender that, you know, probably does still play mid-30s minutes. And then Rob Williams, again, was the guy that I mentioned on Patreon. I was like, I have no idea how many minutes he's going to play. I don't, I have no idea about his health. But if he does play mid, if I knew he was going to play mid 20s minutes, I would like him a lot. And he ended up playing 26 minutes and had an amazing game at four blocks and three steals. It's just one of those ones where it's just like, I just never know what to do with Rob Williams. It's like, if his ownership is going to be relatively high next slate, then I really don't have much interest. Um, if he's going to be pretty low on again, then then obviously yeah, I'm going to have 
a little bit interest in him. It just kind of depends, like, because it's like his health. Like I said, one game, like, one game he can barely move. The next game he looks 100% healthy. And it's just like, it's just so tough to, to try to figure out what you want to do with, with uh, Rob Williams. And then Derek White, 6K. So he was, he lost some run with Rob Williams playing very, very well. Um, still played 24 minutes. I think, you know, we are, we should expect probably close to 30 minutes on average for Derek White. He played a little bit less than the normal, I think. But uh, the price point is slowly risen on him. Still think he's a decent value off the bench. Still think he's a pretty big part of this Boston rotation. On the cheap end, Grant Williams, it, playable, uh, you know, Minutes have been down this series, 16, 21, and 20. So I think on average, we should expect, you know, high teens to low 20s minutes. Not a great point per minute guy, but uh, will be in the rotation for sure. Peyton Pritchard, uh, a good point per minute guy, but minutes not as secure. Only played 10 minutes last game. So definitely a high risk play. Uh, you did not see any Daniel Tice in the regular rotation last game, which I thought would, would happen. I was kind of surprised he played game one and game two in the regular rotation. And yeah, that's it. So um, like I said, only a piece of news really we're waiting for is the status of Steph Curry. I mean, maybe Boston will, will list Rob Williams questionable. Maybe Golden State will list those Otto Porter, Gary Payton guys as questionable. But I expect all of them to play. Um, and I think I'm expecting Steph to play right now too. Uh, but we, we will keep an eye on that. But other than that, guys, uh, that, that'll do it for the video. So I really appreciate you, each and every one of you, you know, watching the videos every single day and, you know, following me, supporting me on Twitter. Really, guys, it, it means a lot. So um thanks uh hope we have some big winners and i'll see you guys all in the next video